And Madam Speaker, I rise today in support of H.R.S. 487, which recognizes the contribution of modeling and stimulation technology to the security... In 2007, the U.S. House of Representatives unanimously recognized modeling and simulation as a national critical technology. They believe that modeling and simulation, or mod sim, has a significant impact on our economy and national security. With mod sim, doctors practice surgeries, soldiers rehearse training exercises, architects build homes, and gamers create video games. In fact, mod sim filters into almost everything we do today. Through sight, sound, and motion, we can virtually explore any situation safely, cost-effectively and timely. For us, in the work that we do, modeling and simulation is a tool that allows us to predict the future. So in that sense, it allows us to fly a spacecraft and design a spacecraft before we actually do it, so that when it actually happens, it happens correctly. ModSim is creating new career fields and opportunities for students, but the rapidly evolving ModSim industry requires a new workforce with unique skills. Analytical skills, uh, mathematical skills, programming skills, uh, but really uh, the, the most important thing is, I think, curiosity, uh, being able to have a passion for interpreting data. ModSim is ready to converge with science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM, education. ModSim can provide virtual environments for safe experimental exploration of many STEM concepts. To better, better prepare students for 21st century workplace, it is important that they learn a little bit about modern simulation, even at K-12 level. Before our students can be taught mod sim, our teachers must first be exposed and mentored in this emerging field. In order to achieve the goal of trying to um, excite more students to pursue engineering and science careers, we're actually working with their teachers. In 2009, NASA Langley Research Center embarked on an initiative to design and pilot a professional development program for teachers called SimAero. The program provides middle and high school STEM teachers the opportunity to work side by side for two weeks with mod sim mentors at a NASA facility. The teachers have already seen some initial impacts of introducing mod sim into their own classrooms. One thing that I'm using is I'm trying to use the terminology, modeling, and, and getting that terminology out, getting the kids not to be afraid of, this is a math model, and they're like, what does that mean? And, and then it's really simple, and they realize, Oh, I can do this. And my real class that I'm teaching right now is a meteorology class, and so we talk about the models that we have to do in order to, to do forecasting. And so uh, there's a lot of spin-offs that, that you, you don't really realize at first when you start applying to this, how am I going to use all this stuff? But it, it actually comes into a very real play. As a final product of the workshop, the teachers developed and presented an original mod sim lesson plan that they have since taken back to the classroom. Lessons covered a variety of subject areas, from physics to biology to calculus. One unique lesson focused on water reclamation using modeling and simulation activities. Mary Bridget Sampson and I worked together to create a, an integrated lesson plan that would encompass more than just one class, and it's called Troubled Waters, and it's about the world water crisis. It's a good simulation for them because in real life they wouldn't be able to go to an agricultural area and change the way that that person is farming, but they can see how it would affect water quality on the simulation. Their lesson, as well as several other lessons, will also be featured in a modeling and simulation flexbook for high school students that NASA is developing under a Space Act agreement with CK-12, a nonprofit foundation. Teachers are able to go and download the book, and there is also um, the capability to go and modify the book as needed for their own personal use using a wiki language and use it as they wish. In just two years, over 50 teachers have participated in NASA's SimAero program, directly introducing over 8,000 students each year to modeling and simulation. To extend the reach of the program, the teachers must do more than take their lesson plans back to their own classrooms. There is actually a requirement of the program that they disseminate their lesson plans through um, national, regional, local conferences and publications as well. 
The teachers have chosen creative ways to share their lesson plans and NASA experience, such as blogs, Facebook pages, and even developing ModSim teacher resource apps for smartphones. That was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and I'm so glad that uh, we were able to go as a group of teachers. It was good to see science in action, because that's not something that we see as teachers every day. The further I get away from it, the more and more I realize I'm using and have actually taken away from the process. Through programs like NASA's Sim Arrow, teachers and their students are embarking on a new field in education. Modeling and simulation, a national critical technology that impacts how we live, work, and play.